So as Peter said, this is Photo Hangouts episode 2 after long hiatus. We had our first episode, one was in October, and uh, that got great re reviews and feedback, so let's hope that we can start a new year with some new great uh, episodes. And um, I brought with me some great friends here, Craig, who you just met, and he will help us with the recording. He's also a photographer. In where are you now? In Florida? An excursion actually right now here in the mobile office, but fortunately I have a pretty good Wi Fi, so this should be good. We should be good to go. That's great. We have Eric, who is uh, sort of a newcomer, but uh, I know him long time. So first days of uh, Google Plus. And we've got Jim yeah, Davis from, from uh, Canada, who's a great landscape photographer, and um, he'll have great stuff to share as well. We have Peter McDermott, who, who I will uh, thank for helping me with using his on-air feature. And he's live from New York. And we got Scott, who I never met before, actually. I just met him in the previous Hangout. And I thought, OK, uh, let's, let's get him in here as well. But uh, I'll, I'll have him give him a chance to let him introduce himself later. And we have Tiffany, who is a wedding photographer, just like Scott, if that's my understanding. And, um, she yeah. has a snoring dog. <laughs> <laughs> so we might hear him later. What I wanted to do today is a little different than last episode. And today's subject basically is we want to talk about the emotional power of photography. But uh, before we do that, I will allow some people here to introduce themselves. And let's start with the right here. And Tiffany, please. Tell us who you are and where you are and what you do. Oh, okay. Um, hi, I'm Tiffany. I'm I'm based out of Calgary, um, so I'm also in Canada, and uh, I do weddings, um, events, uh, mostly portraits, and I do a bit of illustrating as well. That's all right, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> we were, but yeah, Scott, it's your turn now. That sounds, that sounds like a future photographer. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to speak as fast as possible uh, before he has another outburst, nine month old. Um, wedding photographer in New York. I shoot uh, babies in the off season and, uh, and any other parties and models and whatever keeps me, me busy. And a baby in my house every day. So, uh, yeah, that's me. That's great. And myself, I'm in Sweden right now. I relocated here from Germany. And uh, I'm not a photographer professionally, but I enjoy it very much, and it's a great passion of mine. Jim, please tell us who you are. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim from Ontario, Canada. Um, I've been a nature landscape photographer for about 25 years. Um, that's pretty much what I, I just love to get out into nature and shoot it, and that's pretty much how I got into it was just to to express what I felt um, when I was out on my trips and that so to try and bring that to to people that couldn't uh, get that themselves that's great that's great and Eric tell us about your uh, first steps in photography <laughs> my uh, first steps in photography I'm, I'm Eric from Raleigh North Carolina I'm a software engineer and entrepreneur by trade um, but my first steps into photography actually were in high school, uh, operating completely manual cameras because our our instructor determined that it was the best way to learn, even though that digitals were certainly available at that point. So, but yeah, I've always had a, an affinity towards photography and the arts in general. So I'm kind of looking forward to participating today. That's great. That's great. Well, great to have you here. And Craig, even though we don't see your face, but please tell us who you are. I'm doing in in my uh, camera spot there is that's that's what I'm recording so everybody can see what is being recorded at any given time um, so I do photograph a lot of events I have a network of local what I call portal websites and I go out and I photograph events and a lot of people at events and put those photos on my website to help attract traffic to the website so I have a little bit of a different business model as far as how I monetize 
photographs. I, I use it to generate traffic, and then I have advertisers that advertise on the websites. So, but I do do a lot of events and photograph a lot of people. All right, fair enough. Peter, tell me, can I can I screen share as well here, or can you only do I uh, that I'm not sure. Uh, I can certainly screen share if that's needed at any point. Well, let, let's let's try here if it lets me screen share. Uh, I think it does. There, there we go. If you can please green box me and we'll bring up here some photos. So, can you all see that? So it does work, right? Yeah. All right, great. So, um, as I said earlier, today's topic we want to talk about how a photo photograph can elicit emotions. That's why I brought here two wedding photographers, landscape photographer, and and other great interesting people. So we have a wide range of opinions on the matter. And uh, I found these photos here from this National Geographic Photography Contest. This is the winning photo. And uh, and I, I, this, you know this website, uh, the big picture, I'm sure it's known to some people of you, which collects the greatest in photojournalism. And uh, it's really a great place to get inspiration and, and look at great photos. And this photo, uh, which is the winning photo, is quite amazing actually. I, I, as a photographer, when I see something like that, I always think, God, that's a lucky moment. But of course, all kinds of elements come to play there. Not only luck, but also um, your, your uh, knowledge of your equipment and your knowledge of photography. But uh, Emotionally speaking, this this photo has a lot to offer. It has drama, it has great composition, and it has a certain life feeling to it. You know, you, you can feel this 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 uh, insect struggling in what looks like wind and rain. But um, hanging on to that idea of eliciting emotions in photography, let's. Uh, Ask Tiffany because we all Hi. been uh, we all been past Christmas time now, and I saw you posted a family portrait. Yeah. Let me stop screen sharing actually. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to ask you because, and all of you, of course, uh, over Christmas time, you know, we we take pictures of families and friends and relatives, especially as photographers. It's it, it's become our duty to do that. And yeah. um, what does that mean? in terms of emotions and, and capturing that moment. You, as a wedding photographer, Tiffany, how, how do you perceive when, you, when you're on, on, a, on an assignment and in a church and photographing these moments that to some people mean a lot? I think like after a while, like, um, after you do about three or four, you kind of get a feel for, um, for certain cues, I guess. And, um, I mean, like, the great thing about digital is, like, you know, you can take as many different pictures as you can um, in order to capture um, certain... Oh, uh, so sorry, I'm being totally spazzy right now. Um, <laughs> I guess, like... <laughs> well, what, what, what about know, when, when, the clients, when the clients come see your photos? How, what what do you feel as a photographer? Do you what's the most exciting moment? Is is it how the clients react to the photos, and is that really the the thing that you live for? Their reaction. I think like yeah, I think like usually the most exciting moments for me are like when they see certain pictures, or like pictures that I responded to and then they respond to as well like. Or if they see something and it's like, I didn't even know you got that. It's like, it's like, yeah, I was there. That's true. Like a ninja. So. <laughs> How about you? Maybe there's a photo that <laughs> Tiffany could prepare and and show us at some point in the broadcast that that um, that she got a real reaction from. Maybe if she has one that she has permission to show. That is. Yes. Oh. Well, while she thinks about that, let's go to Scott yeah. uh, and, and ask him if you can relate to what she, what Tiffany here said. Um, 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, it's, uh, you know, I've only been doing it a few years now. Um, I just kind of just quit my job as a graphic designer and, and told my wife this is what I want to do, and she said, okay, which is, uh, you know, not so so uh, so often would you hear something like that. But, uh, you know, f for me, I was, uh, it, when I got married in 06, I was really unhappy with my photos. I was just beside myself. You know, we got our album two years later. Pictures were blurry. It was just really, it was just really bad. And, and you know, you, you pay a lot of money, and and uh, it's it's the happiest day of your life. And and for me, when I'm when I'm out there taking pictures uh, on the day of somebody's wedding, you know, pe some people say, oh, I only take a couple, you know, like 800, 500. I'm shooting as many as I can to get that perfect moment and say, you know, law of averages. I shot 100 pictures. In this 25 minutes of this moment of you, you know, giving your vows, and and this one right here is awesome, you know. And the minute I post, I usually post my photos to my blog first, and I'll send a link to the clients, to their Facebook page, just get a reaction. And the minute I see like all these amazing reactions, I start getting the emails and saying how great and how happy they are, and that just makes me happy because that means I did a good job. I, you know, I caught moments that that. You only get a split second to catch, and uh, you know, I don't know. For me, it's just you know, like I said, it, my wife let me do this, and uh, and it's just been kind of a dream come true, just to be able to go and spend people's happiest day. You know, where do you where do you get to say you get to do that for a living? You get to be happy all day. Well, that's so, true, but it, it it is tiring, isn't it as well? Oh, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. And uh, I feel bad for, for my assistant when she works for me and she has to carry my bag, which I never ask her to do, but she does it anyways. Um, <laughs> I do. Uh, it is it is exhausting. I look forward to that that five minutes of sitting down, you know, when everybody's eating, and I usually sit down for five minutes and then I'll get back up and start taking pictures again because I just feel like I might miss something. So but, so when you out when you're out there, do you look for the cinematic? Do you look for the dramatic? Or do you just keep shooting and shooting and shooting? Well, you know, I don't go I don't go crazy, but uh, you know, I try to stay I try to stay out of the way, you know, kinda like Tiffany said, kinda like a ninja. You know, I just hide in the background, you know, dress like a client, you know, dress like a like one of the people at the wedding, you know, wear a nice suit and not look like a mafia guy with a black suit, white shirt and like a red tie or you know. I just try to stay out of the way, blend in and uh, and look for the moments you know where the bride and the groom are laughing, and they're they're having a drink together. And it's just, just them relaxing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, speaking of, uh, so uh, as a as a wedding photographer, you must be as much of a storyteller uh, than you are also a photographer. I mean, it's all about telling a story. That's it, and you know, you just try to capture uh, you know some great shots from from each period in the in the day. And hope that you can tell the story by the end of it. If you can't, you didn't do a good job. You should give a refund. But uh, <laughs> try not to do that, you know, because that'll be a bad business decision. I want to uh, uh, screen share here again and look at this one photo. And maybe Jim, you can. Um, I want to ask you because we talked about storytelling. We talked about cinematic and emotions now. And this photo, which is also from this contest. And it's the people winner, but it shows a very intimate and unique scene, I think, out of someone's life. And uh, uh, can you guys see this now? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Wow. Something out of deer hunting. Jim, Jim, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm here. You as a wedding for uh, as a landscape photographer, sorry. Uh, you are also always out in the wild, like this man apparently is out in the wild. Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't know what he sees to the right of the picture. It may be a deer, it may be a bear, <laughs> who knows what. But uh, what what does this picture give you as a viewer? Well, I'm, when I look at it, the first thing that draws you in is is the uh, the man with the gun. And then the, the child sitting in the front seat that looks like he may be scared. Um, and the, the look on the, which I would assume is the father's face, um, shows a, a 
definite seriousness and in, um, intent in what he's doing. Um, so I can see the connection between the, you know, the, the the father and the son, and the fear and the seriousness, possibly um, you know being attacked by an animal, or yeah, it could be anything. You know, you see a rifle like that, and you, you think of hunting. I can't read the text to know any of the details. Well, it says uh, one shot and the reindeer is dead, actually. Oh, yeah. This is northern Sweden, actually. Now have food on their table. So he is a hunter. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's hunting his own reindeer on his own land. Here's another photo, which I think is quite striking which shows a street scene, I guess. This is in Huntsville, I think, yeah. Right to G-side. But yeah, looking at all these photos, and this is what I, what I want to talk about, and is they all look very intimate, even though it's as, as almost uh, as if the photographer is part of that story and that scene. And uh, I think it's quite interesting to look at this selection of photos that National Geographic has made. Now this is a striking photo with this uh, seascape. And uh, that's quite a nice connection to you, uh, Jim, now. Perhaps you want to share screen. Mm -hmm. And um, you have prepared a couple of photos, I think you said, that you are emotionally attached to. Yeah, and it, it's, it's not so much about... Um about me, it's what I try to do when I go out and photograph is capture an emotion that I feel when I'm out in nature um, and try to convey that to the viewer. So two images, so the, the first one is an image that I'm trying to convey emotion to the viewer. Um, this one was taken in, why isn't it coming up? Have you guys see it yet? Yes, we see it. Okay. Um, so this was a shot in Zion on the Virgin River. I'd hiked up the Narrows. And what what emotion I tried to convey in this one is kind of a natural environment with the, with the flow of the river, which draws the viewer into, into the scene and down the river. Um, the face of the rocks, what I see in those are what I call... Um, spirit in the rocks or spirits in the rocks and, and you can almost see faces within the, the different contours and the, the way the water yeah. has eroded through the rock. So that, that's kind of a, the feeling that I try to convey in, in those images like that. Um, and it, it's amazing that the different um, responses that you get when people see that and some people feel exactly what I felt. So mm -hmm. in that respect I feel that you know in, in, for this image itself you know, I, I conveyed that, that feeling. Um, the other image that I'd like to share is, this was a picture I took just 15 minutes from my house, and um, there was I some that processing was nice. that I did with this image, um, and it, it was because I had an idea in my head of what I wanted to see, but obviously the, the lighting conditions weren't um, conducive to that so what I had to do was I processed it based on what I saw so this is as much a photograph as it is a creation uh, of my own and the emotional part of this one is when I posted it um, there was a, a lady on Google Plus and I, I guess I should mention her because that's very important um, yeah, sure, please. let me quickly get her name you do know this reminds me of Ansel Adams' uh, famous words: uh, "You don't take a picture, you make." Exactly. A photo. Um, so, Rachel Alexandra had um, sent me or made a comment on the photo, saying that it inspired her to write a poem. And her, she, I said, you know, would you know, write it, put it, put it in the comments, and then I asked her later if if she mind if I would share it with the photo because I felt that they needed to go both together not just within the comments but so they both stood on their own so she said no problem yes, so I, what I did was I reshared the photo put the um, put the 
poem that she had written within it, and I mean, it was it was pretty good emotional response from her, from myself, that that I inspired somebody to write a poem on based on one of my photographs, and the response from the from everybody on Google Plus was good. What I'll do is I'm gonna on my stream. Would, would it actually be fine uh, if I read it out loud, for instance? Uh, Absolutely, for sure. What I'll do I'm, before I'm you go. The, I'm looking at the post now, and you, you have the photo there. So, you, Peter, you can perhaps green box him so we can see the photo. And this poem that Rachel wrote reads as follows Days have passed, and years elapsed, and here she stands among the land, reaching branches out to gently caress the light. The darkness crowds, and it's all around, up above and down below. All it goes to show is where her halo cannot be overcome. And this is by Rachel and Alexandra. It's quite deep, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, that's kind of the emotional response that, that she felt by looking at the photo, and it created an emotional response back to me that I inspired somebody to, you know, to share that. That's quite beautiful, yes, absolutely. Has any one of you uh, ever had su such a strong response to looking at a photograph? Um, let me uh, let me just share a, a photo that I just took yesterday. Um, let me see if I can share my screen here. Uh, well, you're sharing it all the time now. Okay. Well, we see um, your screen. Well, what I'm yeah, but I I have to share it so that I record it here. But let me just see if I can do this. Um, can you <laughs> so you can see the picture now? Yes, we see it. I okay. need a vacation. All right, so this was just taken yesterday, and this is Sophie's um, first trip to Florida. And so she had this this shirt on, and I thought, and she's so proud of the shirt. But of course, her face is messy. She just finished eating and so on. But it it doesn't it, it, it to me that that's that doesn't take away from the photo because it's it's the moment. It's the it's what she's doing. And, it's and and I'd rather not even wipe that chocolate or whatever it was on her face off because that's that's part of it. And then another photo that was taken um, moments later. This is her with her older daughter, uh, Sasha. So, and mm. when the mom saw these photos, she was just you know beside herself. She loved these photos. So the whole series of photos. So, uh, yeah, I absolutely. guess what I'm saying is a, a photo doesn't doesn't even have to be perfect it doesn't have to be a work of art for the people that are involved in in whatever it is that they're doing to want to have something better than a, a cell phone snapshot to preserve that that moment and what I find with a lot of events that I shoot and I'm gonna pull this away now and and uh, what do I do to stop sharing um, uh, you I guess, press the button at the top. Okay. Um, maybe there I. There you go. Okay, good. So uh, I, I, the the point that 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 I want to make is a, a lot of the times, a lot of the events that I cover are in the middle part of the day, so the lighting's not perfect, and you can't always engineer the perfect photograph. But you have to try your best, find a little bit of shade or whatever you can do to get the best shot you can. But at the same time, you can't always disrupt the event to, to get that great photograph. So you have to, to work a compromise between the best possible quality and getting the photo and not disrupting the event. And I'm sure with weddings, you have the same problem. I know they do a lot of beach weddings here at Siesta Beach. And of course, the brides don't think about lighting. You know, they don't schedule it at 5 o'clock p.m. Um, when the light is soft and so the photographers have to figure out a way to get a few shots at least to get some shots that are acceptable and that are good enough to to really preserve that moment for the people that are involved so um, so that was the only point I was trying to make with with those photos is um, those were just shot with my little Sony NEX5 uh, with the Zeiss lens on it and um, we just grabbed a couple of shots that, that now they have as a souvenir. Maybe Scott or Tiffany want to add something to those uh, notions. 
I I mean, for me, uh, you know, like the the picture of, of of the little girl. You know, every time I look at a picture I take of my son, it 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 brings emotion to me. It's like wow. I mean, that's that's my son. You know, <laughs> it just makes me feel amazing. It's just an absolutely. It could be the lamest picture ever, or it could be the picture I took of him watching the Giant game the other day, because he was actually looking at the screen, and I'm like, wow, you know, he's got a Manning jersey on. This is going to watch games for the rest of his life, hopefully, together, or my life. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's for me, that's a, that's a poem in itself, well, that and watching Eli throw touchdown passes. But, <laughs> you know, that's... Absolutely. We haven't, we haven't let uh, Eric say a word yet, so... Um... Let's, um, because obviously you think, since you're not, you, you think you're, you, you cannot say much about photography since you're not a photographer such, uh, or do it as much as we do. But uh, let me ask you a, a question, for instance, and I hope the viewers are, are okay with these kind of photos. And this brings me back to emotions and the power of photography as a document. So let me screen share here again. And these are pictures, the best photojournalist pictures from 2011 and uh, if you see that now Eric mm -hmm. you, you as, an, as a viewer not as a photographer just as a human being when you see pictures like these what does it do to you it, I mean it, it the first word that comes to mind for, for me is anger I mean obviously there's some sort of oppressor or some sort of unrest at least happening and it really and this one is this one is kind of a bit different but it kind of reaches a chord yeah that I don't know that you can really it reaches you at some deeper human level I think um, and there's not necessarily a word for it like in those two pictures it's just unrest and, and anger um, what, what about and I hope here I want to uh... Warn anyone watching that uh, this picture is a bit uh, violent. Uh, but what what happens uh, when you look at something like that? Mm. Great. Actually, sorry, this is the picture I wanted. This is the picture I wanted. Yeah, it's just it's it's upsetting because some that you're documenting an event there, and obviously someone went through some sort some sort of terrible suffering. Yeah, enough it's, it's the that man injured by a suicide shed. bomb attack. Yeah, so someone was anger had enough anger in them, they wanted blood to be shed, and that kind of like, I don't know, it, it touches everyone. I think at some level, regardless of the specific subject matter, um, kind of so, makes you want to be active and do something about it. You know, in a lot of cases you can't. <laughs> that's that's true. Uh, most cases you can't. And the, and, and the ir irony here is, and the sad thing is that most people will watch these photos and then just go back to the dinner, and uh, that's how it is. Uh, that's how it is in our civilization, because we can't possibly them. Well, you know, them. Max, you say you, you can't do anything about it, but we, we can do something about it. We can talk about photography as a way to shine the light on things like this. We can defend the right for photographers to to take photographs anytime it's challenged um, Absolutely. Any, anytime yeah. some some authority figure steps up and says you can't take photos here I mean we need to do our best to be standing up for those rights because that photo might be the only thing between us and and you know absolute tyranny at some point sure time. sure and, and I, I actually it's kind of funny I heard it on the drive home um, today uh, some 21-year-old girl uh, started photography at 21 years old uh, and became a war journalist, effectively. Um, and she's she's done 10 years. She started basically in 2001, and she's done 10 years as a war journalist. And she keeps asking herself now, how many pictures of dead children do you have to take for someone to make it not happen again? And it's it's the same types of pictures that keep coming up, and just like Max is saying, you keep going back to just you just go right back to dinner, you know. And yes. it, it, I don't know if it's it's just the culture, I guess. I I don't know how can we address that because pictures haven't saved children, not not directly, you know. 
I mean, some of you might have seen this picture. Sorry to interrupt you. No, it's fine. Um, uh, this picture of uh, this couple who who is sitting on the on what remains of the house, which is just those steps, <laughs> and uh, and I'm just looking at this stream of pictures here, which is uh, as I said, called uh, the Year in Pictures Part Two, and um, but you see all these different emotions uh, from from war, from the power of nature, to uh, human emotions here, this guy sharing about something. He's reacting to the death of Osama bin Laden. And uh, and then again, something like this. Uh, one second. This, the Space Shuttle Atlantis, which is, um, I think, what this was the last one. So you have, in one on one page, you have a picture displaying the best of the human spirit, and the worst at the same time. And uh, Ernst Scott and Tiffany, well, you're just waiting for Travis because you, your job is to take photos of people's most valued moments in life, the beautiful moments in life. But you see these photos in newspapers, on the internet, and everywhere around you. And um, what, what, what kind of feeling do you have for those photographers who take these pictures? who put themselves in danger, so we can see what goes on. Uh, this is a striking image. I applaud them. Like I have so much respect for people who will do anything to get the shot. You know, will like, you know. Like, um, there's a photographer on Google+, Plus. is a good friend of mine, um, Kyle Marquardt, and um, he had a post uh, a few months ago, or a couple of months ago, where he was, it, it was a picture that he had of um, of penguins because he likes to to um, go to the Antarctic and yeah and the and he was talking about how he had to get like belly down into the penguin penguin guano <laughs> in order to get those shots, but he was getting shots that no one else is getting because he. You know, didn't care if he if he stank afterward. You know, so I was like, yeah, absolutely. So, Jim, did yeah, you I ever? Have uh, sorry, for those guys. No, go on, please. No, no, I was I was finished. <laughs> Jim, have you ever been uh, in a situation where you you put yourself in a certain danger to get a certain angle on a landscape or a river or a rock formation? <laughs> Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, many examples. Um, my profile picture is one of them on my my Google Plus profile. Oh yes, um, yeah. It's it, thanks it's, on the arch. Yeah, it, it's a lot of it's um, perceived risk. Some people see that as very dangerous. Um, others, myself, to me, there there was no danger in that. Uh, but there has been times where. You know, one thing can go wrong. You let your guard down once, and it, it could, you know, lead to your your death or serious injury. Um, but over the years, you know, I, I know my my own limits, and um, I have a healthy fear of of things. So I, th I think that's where um, you know everybody has to have their own. Just because somebody sees me do something doesn't mean that they should do it. Um, yeah, I, no. I got to ask a question. Is there really anything more dangerous than a bride on their wedding day? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is, is that a that's a good person? point? <laughs> um, I would say the mother-in-law. Oh, that's true. This is true. Oh, are you are you referring to a bride who is not happy with her photos? <laughs> No, this is a bride who's just not happy with anything, or you know, waiting for the worst to happen. <laughs> if, if you must have seen that video of this uh, poor uh, wedding photographer who, who falls in the fountain uh, <laughs> because he's walking backwards in the church until he falls into into this fountain at the end of the of the aisle, <laughs> <laughs> and there goes his work. You know, imagine happening. You you must have, of course you always have two cameras at least and uh, 
but uh, I'm sure it must be a nightmare if you lose some some photos. It's because uh, you can't repeat it. Knock on wood, it hasn't happened to me yet. Thank God. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I can imagine how how disappointing that will be to your client or to the people. Peter, you're you're like this uh, this viewer for uh, this third party viewer, but share us your opinion. Uh, You've heard, you've heard less. You listen to us uh, speaking now, and you've seen some pictures. Uh, maybe you have something to say, and you know, share some of your opinions. No, you know, yeah. I just think it's amazing, you know, how much uh, photography has become accessible to people around the world. Now, with photographers uh, able to take pictures of news events, and that's really how I see things. I see them from a journalistic stance. But the way that photographers are able to capture an image and have those images shared worldwide almost immediately, uh, it does go to prove, though, that it's not necessarily the first person to capture the image, but really the person that captures the image best. So it's not always being the first, but uh, usually being the best. And it's just amazing with, with the, uh, the changes in technology and the accessibility and our ability to just blur the lines on the globe, how quickly... Uh, photojournalism is just spreading and, and it's amazing meeting all these new people from the social networks. So I, I'm very glad I was able to help you guys out tonight by uh, broadcasting this. Absolutely, and, and I hope you keep helping us in the future. <laughs> uh, let me Allow me to share um, one image here, maybe to, um, to bring this to an end soon. But uh, let's get a last round of opinions, starting with Craig. This picture I took, um, I was out with my girlfriend here in the in the landscapes here uh, by the cliffs because I'm living by uh, by the sea, so they have quite uh, quite interesting and uh, and impressive rock formations here by the sea. And I took this picture just quickly. You know, uh, can you see this now? You can see it, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And this is this was just taken by a glance. It, photographically, and it's technically it's not good at all because uh, I wasn't focusing. The focus is a little off. However, the emo the whole uh, composition I think brings me uh, some emotions. The the sunset and 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 this image of this person who is my girlfriend walking down this cliff and. Um, Kind of, you cannot, you cannot see where she's walking, where that path is leading, and that's tied. That was tied to the post I, I wrote, uh, "Unknown Paths Lead to Success." And um, I know, Craig, when you look at this photo, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Well, um, w when I look at any photo, I, I look at who's the, f who is it important to, and some photos are going to be important to everybody. Some photos are going to be beautiful and attractive to look at for almost anybody. This is, to me, this is a, a nice lighting. I like the photo. I, I think you did a good job on it. Um, but obviously, the people that are involved, the people that were there, the people that she's going down the cliff, you took the photo, uh, it, it's going to be of, of utmost importance to those people. And so this goes right back to what I was talking about, about photographing events and, and important times in people's lives, whether it be a wedding or, or any kind of an event, a first vacation, whatever. Um, I think that, that the key is that photography can allow people to go back and really relive moments and enjoy them and share them with people. And it's, it, there's almost nothing like it. Uh, now we mix video in with it and, and so forth, and, and we, yeah. that's a whole other discussion. But um, if, if the photo is important to one person, to me, it's an important photograph. And so I have a different outlook on it. I, a lot of people try to take photos that are going to be important to many thousands of people, and if it's not that, then they're not happy. To me, if, if I take a photo at an event and, and one person is, is extremely happy with that photo... Then, then I think I did a good job. And, and so I think that's what you did here. That's what not, I not, that, not, that, not that others aren't going to like it, and I, I like no, the photo, yeah. but, but there's somebody that that photo is really going to mean something to maybe 10 years from now, maybe 15, maybe 20 years from now, um, and, it, and that moment is captured. Absolutely. Eric, uh, you have... I, you have I, yeah, I... I 
I love I love this this picture actually. Um, it, it, maybe it's just because of the way I look at things, but exactly kind of to um, to Craig's point, it's like. Well, well, what is the, what is the way you look at things? It I I'm getting to it. It's it's just everything I see is adventure, especially in a photograph like this. Though um, it's like that unknown horizon. You know, the sun is you know setting in this picture. I think. Um, yes, it's setting. And, and you guys, or she is just like, you know, looks like she's just charging forward with no concern for what's behind her. It's like some epic journey is going on. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think that that certainly relates to, especially like the first photograph you showed in the in this hangout tonight was, you know, the dragonfly. And to you, it evoked, you know, this this dragonfly struggling. To me, it was more it brought back memories of, you know, both chasing dragonflies as a kid. And just kind of d dancing in in like the sprinkler in the summer, and it, it, again, it it kind of shows that different commu different images can evoke different emotions in different people, obviously, um, and, and it's not always unanimous agreement on what what people see, uh, and yeah, I think that's, that's an important. You, you can't please everyone, and sometimes you can't please anyone, so. It is what it is, and you take a photo. It's an interesting photo for some. It may not be for others. Don't stress about it. Thank you for that insight, Eric. Uh, how about you, Peter? Peter? I'm sorry. I had a uh, body <laughs> trouble there. No, it, it's... um, it's There's so many dimensions in it, and... Uh, I think that's what's really unique about it. Scott, what's what's uh, your emotional response to this photo? I want to I want to be your girlfriend with that sun on my face right now because I am cold <laughs> and that makes me feel really warm. Even though she's wearing a you know a jacket and yeah, it's just it was quite like cold. Oh, yeah, the, the the light was amazing. It was amazing lighting. I tell you, I, I've never had. I never had, um, sorry, I'm just going to go off the point a little here, but I never had natural light like this, because in Sweden the sun is much lower than it is in Germany, so the light is just amazing here. Not like the folks down in Australia who have stark light all day long, as they tell me. <laughs> but, um, no, sorry, yeah, please go on. No, it's, it's, I, I love it. I, just, I wish, uh, the only thing that's a little disappointing is that your girlfriend doesn't have a camera ready to take a picture. Well, she's wearing she's wearing my tripod. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? I, I can't tell. I thought it was yeah, a camera. Yeah, but no, she movie. she's not a photographer. She uh, she's my pod assistant uh, when I'm out there on the cliffs, <laughs> and she's my guide. <laughs> follow her. That's good. If she tumbles down the hill, it looks can... like looks like you have a tough life, Max. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, incredibly tough. Yes. Please, Tiffany, you have the last word. Oh, I just like I just posted in the chat. I was just thinking this totally reminds me of like you know that that whole scene in Rocky Four where he climbs the mountain after getting away from the Russian cops that have to babysit him, and then he's like oh, yes. up on the mountain and he's about to scream "Drago." <laughs> and oh, that's yeah, that's a nice <laughs> uh, analogy. Yeah, Rocky Four. Yeah, <laughs> she she's happy. She's having her. I guess I, yeah. I guess we can close this with the word with the words that you have to go the distance, whatever your dream is. <laughs> if it's photography or whatever your journey may be in life, you need to go the distance or else you will never succeed. I think that's a great note to finish this second episode tonight and uh, I thank Peter again for um, lending us his on air feature. And I thank all of you, Craig, Eric, Jim. Myself, Scott, and Tiffany, and Peter, of course, again, for joining and, us tonight. And, and, and I hope and Mac, the people who have been watching enjoyed this. Sorry, Craig. Yeah, yeah before we do a, a wrap, um, were you going to give everybody a chance to mention a website or any contact information if they wanted to before I stop the recording? Sure. Sure. We can do that, please. So I guess we'll go left to right, so I'll start. My website is craigship.com, and uh, you can learn all about everything I do there, craigship.com. 
Uh, I'm going to actually not promote myself today because I'm obviously not a photographer, but um, I'm going to promote... Uh, my friend Mary, she's doing a f her first 365-day project, so she's photoblogging a new picture every day. Um, and I just put the link in chat. It's marycbedard.wordpress.com. So that's great. Yeah, for myself, I would just uh, reference everybody to my Google Plus profile. From there, they can uh, get some links to my any of my websites and blogs that I have. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Yes, all the all these links, uh, all the one, also the one that Eric just mentioned, we will include it later when we post the video. For myself, uh, the uh, Google profile will be fine, and there you have links to my website, which is maxmajewski.com. But uh, if you don't know how to spell that, uh, you'll find the link on my profile. And uh, Peter, if you'd like to promote yourself. Well, I'm not going to promote myself. If you wanted to find me, you can Google me. But what I do want to promote is sharing circles and helping others discover new artists and new talent. Um, there's a lot of notable photographers out there that already have a great following, and those followings have come from other networks. But uh, let's uh, make this an opportunity for some uh, new people to be discovered and uh, share the joy. When you find those people, share them with your friends by sharing circles. Absolutely. Well said. Scott, your turn. Yeah, I mean, my, usually my, my Google profile is pretty good. Uh, it'll take you to my website, which is theredsweatshirt.com. But, uh, you know, on Google, everything is, I, I post everything. So it's not just photos of weddings, it's uh, photos of life. So I think that the Google profile is definitely the way to, to find me. And if you want to get to my website, you can definitely find a link there. All right, cool. Tiffany, please. You want to promote uh, yourself? Yeah. yeah, my Google Plus website is, um, profile, sorry, is where you can find all the info on me and uh, my prof um, portfolio website is senyo7.com and um, my blog is there as well. So senyo7.com backslash blog. Um, and that's where, you, where you'll find my most recent updates and um, new pictures and um, but I, but I usually update Twitter more than anything else. So, um, twitter.com backslash lil, L -A -L -T -T -E -A, So, yeah. Um, and the links are all on my um, Google Plus profile. And any link that isn't there, it's not really me. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll include all the links in the big post. Uh in the coming days when we post this video. And um, yeah, so this brings this second episode to a wrap and I hope whoever was watching enjoyed watching it live and we will post the video, as I said, hopefully by the end of the week for anyone to re-watch or watch for the first time. And I thank everyone here to, to have been part of this and uh, see you uh, for episode three, which I don't have a date for yet, but uh, I promise that this will be more uh, consistent from now on. And well, thank you and um, good evening from Germany, uh, from Sweden. Sorry, I get confused with the locations. And it's <laughs> actually good morning uh, here because it's uh, 2 a.m. here right now in beautiful Sweden. And um, that's it from here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. And uh, that's a wrap. Thank you. Good night. 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 Or good morning. Morning, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are still watching on the live stream, I appreciate uh, the opportunity that uh, Max has given me to uh, broadcast this on his behalf. Um, be sure to circle all of the folks that you see in the Hangout. Um, once you hover over their, their picture, you'll be taken to their profile. From there, you can circle them. Uh, hopefully, Max will be able to share a circle of everybody involved. And uh, make sure you're following all these people if you're interested in photography. And I uh, just want to thank you guys so much for uh, joining us and watching on the live on-air stream. I'm going to go ahead and exit the Hangout. When I do, you guys will be staying talking together, but the folks online uh, won't be able to watch any longer, so you guys can continue with the private conversation. Everybody, thanks for watching, and have a great night. Thank you.